So when I wrote my book, Scone or Scone, <laughs> The Essential Guide to British Afternoon Tea, I did a survey. I actually had a mailing list of over 20,000 people. So I was able to ask a lot of people what is important to them about visiting a tea room, about enjoying the experience in a tea room. Here in Britain, we're blessed to have many lovely tea rooms, but I know hotels all over the world also offer afternoon tea. So I thought I'd share the top 10 recognitions of what's important for a tea room. And the first one involves this. And it was, this is number 10, a teapot that pours properly. Well, I hear your pain. I do. I don't know whether you've ever experienced pouring from a teapot and actually more comes out of other places or it drips down or it's all over the cloth and it's like, oh no. So a teapot that pours properly doesn't sound that important, but actually it's jolly useful. And if you're going to be passing and pouring for other people, let's make sure it does the job. This one's pretty good, but I do own a teapot that isn't so good at pouring. So I don't know, I should just turn it into something for flowers, shouldn't I? Can you guess what number nine is? So it's about the staff and how they look. So people my age and older remember back to the lion's tea rooms and old fashioned tea rooms where the staff wore what are called, they were called tweenies. They had a proper little uniform and a kind of mob cap. <laughs> well, you're not going to get that these days so much. You might get a frilly apron every now and then. Uh, it's not that important, but if they look pleasant, clean, maybe something uniform amongst them that they're all wearing the same, it just makes you feel it's an occasion. I guess what we're saying is we don't want t-shirts and shorts uh, on the staff serving us on the whole. Number eight, it's about being rushed. Now, some of the London hotels have become so oversubscribed and so popular, you are only allowed 90 minutes. Now, 90 minutes is enough time to eat your sandwiches and cakes and so on. But really, you want to soak in the atmosphere. If there's a pianist playing, like at the London hotels, that's so lovely. You just want to get lost in the occasion. You know that timelessness is a very important human um, treat. It's like when you go on holiday. If you're going for two weeks, somewhere in the middle, you're lost in the relaxation before the countdown begins. It's like five days, four days, three days. The timelessness in the middle. And if you can get that at an afternoon tea place where you're not that rushed, we do allow two and a half hours or so here. And then there's somewhere else they can go and sit if they need to at the secret sconery here in Essex. <laughs> so we want you to have a relaxing experience, but you can't stay till midnight. We did once run a restaurant here and the guests that we came to know came and stayed so late that we used to let them let themselves out and lock up at the end. We'd gone to bed. <laughs> anyway, number seven is about choices. Now, these days, gluten free is one of those choices. Lactose free, nut free, vegan, vegetarian. These are all important. Uh, for some people, it's more than important, it's life-saving. So choices are very well received and a restaurant that doesn't offer any may struggle these days. So choices it is. I'm sympathetic to the restaurant as well. My husband and I used to run a wedding venue and we had one set menu for a wedding four years ago, but we had to do 15 variations of this set menu because of all the guests can't eat, won't eat. 15 variations was a struggle. So I'm sympathetic to that too. Well, the other aspect is about a range of teas. And of course, coffee, hot chocolate and other things. Now, I do love tea. I love Earl Grey with afternoon tea. I love an elderberry tea. We sell it, but I've never come across it anywhere else. It's lush and English breakfast. But when you go to the posh hotels, you can find page after page after page, all types of tea, including white tea and so on. So it's lovely to experiment. Sometimes in London hotels, you can change your cup of tea several times over. So you get to experience ones you wouldn't normally try. At our place, 
you can blend your own tea. We have a tea blending cabinet and you can mix and match like Earl Grey with dried rose petals and lavender or whatever combination you want. And I always say to the guests, look, if it doesn't taste nice, your experiment here, don't worry, it's just a cup of tea. We can pour it away and you can make a different one. So anyway, it's fun to have a range of teas and to experiment. So if you only have English breakfast, maybe branch out and try something else. <laughs> so number five on the list was about the ambience and the location. Now, in a perfect world, we'd have views, we'd have the sea, we'd have gorgeousness like that. But actually, city tea rooms can be completely charming and it can be fun to look out on cobbled streets if you're in an old city like York or something. And, but even those without beautiful views can be created to have a lovely ambience. And those things are the cherry on the cake. Do you see my analogy then? <laughs> Number four. Well, this is a pretty important one. I, I am surprised it's not even high on the list. Number four, the food must be fresh. Fresh fresh. Have you ever picked up a sandwich and it's dry? It's almost crispy. That's happened many times. Very hard in hot weather to avoid, but it can be avoided. But that must be a restaurant priority. You want to pick up scones or scones and cakes and so on, and they've got to be soft and fresh and delicious. Victoria sponge cake that's gone dry. No, I'm sorry, that won't do. So that was number four. I'm sort of surprised it wasn't three, two or one. Number three. It is the pretty cups and saucers. So at home, we've all got mugs. I've got a favorite one from childhood. It's not going to win a beauty prize, <laughs> but it is lovely to come out and enjoy something very pretty, prettier than mine, I'm sure. Uh, that's very nice, pretty cups and saucers. They can make you think, oh, isn't this nice? In fact, if you've all got different ones on the table, sometimes it affects where I'd like to sit because you want a certain one. <laughs> Similarly, moving on to number two, table linen. So it can be lovely to have real napkins in a pretty colour. It doesn't have to be, but real napkins are lovely. Starch napkins, again, make you feel special. But it's not just about the look of that. Number two was about cleanliness in general. So if you sit down and the cloth is stained, that's not so good. One person said that if she picked up the menu and it was icky and sticky on the outside, that put her off the whole thing from the get-go. And I do sympathise with that. Picking up a cup and finding, you know, stains in it or lipstick, nobody wants that. So cleanliness is important. And so if I'm going out, I don't want to be aware of dirt around me or the last person's crumbs on the floor. Don't fill my floor. <laughs> but that's all part of the occasion, especially also if you go to the ladies or the gents. Cleanliness next to godliness, that made number two. So we're down to the top thing that people wish to see in a tea room. Can you think what it is? I shall tell you. It's about smiling, lovely service. So that begins from the entry, the welcome you have. And some places are very crisp and cool and others are extremely warm and welcoming and the staff know how to make guests feel at home. Right the way through to how you're served. I was at a very expensive London hotel and had an abysmal experience. It was just horrible. And it was because of our waiter. And I felt so strongly about it. I went back up to London and had an appointment with the manager. And I sat there for two and a half hours, <laughs> bemoaning my lot. And so the waiting staff and the experience in that way can actually make or break the experience. So that's interesting to me that that came even higher, number one on the list, higher than the type of linen, the type of food, the tea you're offered, or the china so the serving staff bless them and we serve here as well makes a big difference to how the whole event goes down so if you've got thoughts about what should be on that list what did people not mention that you're saying why didn't they talk about that let me know in the comments i'd love to hear and i can also take it on board for my place the secret sconery maybe there's ways we can improve as well every day is a school day anyway it is afternoon tea week this week perhaps not the week you're watching this video but i hope you get to go out for afternoon tea soon and maybe 
bear that list in mind. Thank you.